Saturday, fellow crafters. It's Chandra with Stock and Stuff. I am once again excited to bring to you today a tutorial on the Design Space software for the Cricut Maker. This video is part of a collaboration called Share It Saturday, where several crafters will share tips and tricks about using various cutting machines. Remember, the key to the Cricut Maker, which is the machine that I use, is to be able to work the software. The machine is the easy part. Keep in mind that if you are thinking about getting a Cricut Maker, create a Design Space account first and start playing, and that'll help you decide if it's best for you. This month, I want to talk about material settings. The Cricut Maker is a very diff is very different from the Air 2 because the settings are not on the machine itself. They are in the software. I got my Cricut Maker when they first came out and I really wish that they did have uh, the knob on the machine or the settings because all the tutorials that I was able to find at that time were about that knob on the Air 2. So I had to figure out some setting tricks on my maker. So these are some of the tricks that I have figured out when it comes to my cutting material. So I'm actually just going to go to a project that I already have um, in, my, in my list because I'm not going to cut anything today. I'm just going to show you how to um, choose the material. So I just went to a um, to a shape. I had uh, some shapes that I was uh, doing, and so um, I'll just use that as my as my demo. So I would go to make it, and let's say I'm going to use cardstock. All right. So I hit the green button up in the right corner that said make it, and it took me here because I, this. This shape has two. It's um, uh, it's actually two shapes. So it's going to show me that the circle that I had in yellow is going to print on one mat, and then the um, the doily is going to print on the other, which I had in purple. Now in this screen, um, I can choose my material size. So a lot of times if I'm just cutting something like this and I'm only cutting one, then I don't need a, to use a whole sheet of paper um, for that. I can pick um, whatever size and it will cut it on that. Now you have to choose that for each of your pages because you may want um, something a different you may have a different paper or something that you use it on the other one. So it asks you for each one. So once I went smaller, it pulled up some other smaller sizes, uh, and it also goes as big as 12 by 12 24. Now, I will show you another little thing here. I'm going to take this back to, actually, I'm going to do 8.5 by 11. And I'm going to say that I want to cut six of these. So I'm going to apply the six, and it will give me that. Now, you see that it took it back to 12 by 12. Um, it depends on what you're using because sometimes I cut with scraps so I have to really um, figure out if that's the size I want I could take it down to uh, 6 by 6 now if it does that if you see it doesn't fit it gives me two sheets I can do 8.5 by 11 and there or I could have left it at 12 by 12 even though I know my paper was smaller, say my paper was 8x8, eight eight, then I could simply come over here and move these down and put them where I want. This is also a good trick if you're using multiple pieces of paper on one mat that you could um, start to move some things around. So, so say I wanted these in yellow, but I also wanted them in blue. The Cricut doesn't really care what color you want them in, but say I put my yellow paper at the top and I was going to put my blue paper, at, I would start it at 5 and then I'd move the ones down that I wanted in my blue paper. And then on my mat when I put it in the machine, 
I would put a piece of paper up here and then I'd be very conscious of my grid line and making sure that I had that below the five uh, inch line. So that's one way to do it. So I really was here to talk about materials and I got into something else, but since we're cutting, we're cutting. So let's say for instance, we are going to cut a uh, cardstock. All right. All right. So let, I want to also say that I know that I have told you to practice on design space and you can practice on the on the mat and deciding what you want and playing with attaching and welding and some of the things I showed you in the January and February video. But you won't be able to get to the cutting phase to play around with this um, because you, it will have to connect to the Cricut. So I um so I'm going to show you this because if you don't have the machine yet and you're just playing around the software, you can see it here. So it opens to, these are my favorites. I made them my favorites by starting them in the list. Um, but it gives you a popular. This would be the go-to that would come up. And you see there's different, uh, different things here. And I don't think those are my popular. I think they're Cricut's popular because I've never cut felt. So I know that's not my popular, but you can browse all materials. But I want to show you, uh, I want to show you this. So it gives you light cardstock at 65 pounds, and it gives you medium cardstock at 80. And I'm gonna tell you what I have found. I use the 80 for my 65, and for my um heavy cardstock, my 110, my 100, I use the poster board setting. All right. So the poster board is under artboard. So make a note of that. You see, I have started. It is one of my favorites because that is that is the only thing that I have found that gives me a clear, a clean cut on my heavy 110. And even on your texture or any any a heavyweight uh, card stock, a hundred and above, I use the poster board setting. Now, if you're not sure what materials are in here, they have it separated by section. So they have art board that includes even your cereal boxes, your chipboard, heavy chipboard light chipboard and I'm gonna be honest I mess around with chipboard because the only chipboard I buy from the store is the heavy chipboard and I only buy Cricut brand so when I get um, if you've watched any of my videos you know that I collect chipboard from work and so I'm not sure what size it is so I do have to play around with that um, a little bit but if I feel like it's heavier I will use the um, the heavy chipboard setting because I want to use the knife blade. I get a cleaner cut with the knife blade. But if I use one of these lesser, it's it's just going to have me use the regular blade, and it's it's not really clean. And then a tip on chipboard: I have a cutting mat that is just for my chipboard. It gets it makes your mat messy, and so I don't like to switch it back and forth or have to clean in between so I just have a, a gunky mat, um, chipboard mat. The next section is cardstock and I have glitter cardstock marked as one of my favorites and then of course heavy cardstock which that is what I cut my 80 um, or you know my 70s 78s and 80s on is the heavy card stock or if I have a 65 pound that has some um, texture to it or just feels like it has some fabric pieces in it I will use the heavy sometimes I buy a bezel that is really heavy and I use that poster board setting and then sometimes if I get it at Joanne it's just a smidgen lighter and I can get away with the heavy cardstock setting but I'm going to show you something else when I get to that um, there's holographic light cardstock medium cardstock and then you even got pattern glitter cardstock then you got all these fabric settings there is a mat and a blade separate for fabric and I have cut set cut fabric on my Cricut uh, at, at least twice I believe um, so you know there's a whole sewing um, 
collection of of uh, things you can do with the Cricut. And I look, you know, I really feel like they've added even more because then there's felt settings and it gives you a little bit about the types of felt. And then there's a foam setting. I've never cut foam on my on my Cricut, so I might have to try that. Cuz even craft foam is there. And then um aluminum foil and then there's the iron-on now Cricut has the settings set so that you can use their iron iron-on or other iron-on so you'll see like this says non Cricut so there's that opportunity to to just say this is my own eight uh, heat transfer vinyl HTV um, so I have marked it as one of my favorites because I did I did cut some leather and it cut really smooth like butter it was beautiful so that's a this is it's an excellent machine for that I have not cut construction paper but look at all the different kind of paper that you can play with in here and like I said I have found um, I don't cut a lot of copy paper unless I'm doing some print to cut but I always use 28 pound I've never done anything less than that and I cut vellum last week so yeah so I'm kind of messing around with some of these and then I have cut plastic it did not cut as smooth as I would have liked it to cut last week I did cut some acetate and it was easy as pie and then here's your vinyl and so there is it it also comes in the different you choose what kind of vinyl that you have um, I always choose premium I have not cut any wood although I own some of this I just haven't done anything with it so I just wanted to show you all the materials that are in here I believe on the Cricut site there's kind of like a sheet that shows you you know that tells you some different things but for the sake of this tutorial let's say that we're going to use the um, heavy card stock okay now here it tells you this is your material that you selected you can change the pressure of the cut to less so if you feel like well it's not really 110 it's a little lighter or I want it to be delicate because this is some fancy paper you can make it less if you feel like it's heavy or your deep you really need to make sure the details are in there you can do more now if you cut it and you realize hmm this doesn't look like it's gonna it went all the way through don't pull it don't hit the button to exit it out of the machine unload don't hit the unload button just hit the so this one right here is the load and unload button this is on the machine so you don't want to unload it if you don't think it really cut through or if you want to just be sure and give it another go round then what you do is you hit the Cricut C on the machine and it will just boom start cutting it all over again all right now I will say this if you emboss then you gotta go through the whole process you can't skip you gotta go back and emboss and then cut so that's kind of a pain because sometimes I don't need it to emboss again I just wanted to cut so suppose I you know I did my cut but suppose on this sheet I decide I don't have heavy cardstock I want to use um, glitter cardstock so I can change it on my second sheet and then again back to my pressure now the software tells you what you need to do what you need and for the most part everything goes in clamp B you need to make sure you have the right blade in there and then it'll tell you then it'll flash for you to load and then this will light up and you just press the C it'll be flashing it's just, it looks like this if you can see that grayed out it will light up if we were actually ready to cut and it will um, it will be flashing on your machine letting you know that it's time to cut all right so um, that's how you do that if I was cutting vinyl then I would edit and you need to make sure you edit both sheets um, not just any vinyl if I were doing heat transfer vinyl I would mirror it 
unless it's um, unless it's a printed vinyl then that you know sometimes you buy those from Etsy and you don't mirror those you cut them straight on and so you would flip it it, it will automatically fit, flip itself I sh it would have been better to see this with words but um, but the key is to remember that you have to do it to all the mats and you click done so see this one says mirror off but this one is mirror on and I can't tell you how many times I've messed that up and did not <laughs> make sure that every mat was mirrored and I wasted final so um, I'd let me speak to chipboard just a little bit more so if you are using chipboard say like the heavy two millimeter it's going to make a lot of passes I mean like 20 something passes you've got to kind of watch it because depending on what you're cutting if it's something simple like a circle you might only need 50 percent of those passes if it's something a little more intricate you might need 75 percent of those passes um, I have noticed that it varies and you also need to make sure that um, you you know you should pause it so maybe um, pause it at 50% in or if it doesn't feel like it's cutting to you because there's probably some chipboard stuck on the blade so you should pause it there's a pause button on the Cricut there's actually only um, three buttons on there turn it on well four buttons turn it on and off pause cut and load and you might want to pause it and check your blade I often have to do that when I'm doing heavy chipboard because chipboard gets stuck on the blade and then it's not actually cutting for you um, and then you really need to be cutting at a time where you've got good internet unless you're using the cord to connect to your computer so I, I use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever it is Bluetooth for my Cricut and so if my internet is unstable it will stop in the middle of the cut and then it doesn't always remember where it was and it might start over or it will freeze and you've got to force it out and so that's a hard thing too so anyway each month I will try to do demonstrations that range from beginner to advanced if you have questions or something that you'd like for me to demonstrate please leave it below in the comment section and if you're interested in the Cricut Maker come back at 10 a.m. Eastern Time every second Saturday for the entire month of 2021 please check out the other tutorials from the crafters that are listed below to learn more tips and tricks for the cutting machines next month I will be doing a tutorial on fonts and how to manipulate them um, in Cricut Design Space. Thanks for watching. Have a great Saturday.